Hello, best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov, and you just welcome to my channel, Dr. Viktor Fursov, entomologist, beekeeper, teacher. And today I have a very special stream with questions, questions which I have received during the different from different people in different time. And some of them uh, sounds like very interesting questions because they're not personal, but they have a general meaning. Maybe these questions will be interesting for people, for English-speaking audience, for Russian-speaking audience, for everyone who is interested in entomology, in insects, in nature as well. I hope so, who is joining us and expected to have a stream in Russian will be satisfied as well. I will be trying to speak definitely and to be understood. Well, first of all, I I have to notice that some people are quite interested in different videos which I have uploaded, and from time to time people sending me questions. And I have a one very interesting viewer who is in Turkish Republic, who is in Turkish Republic, and he is uh, quite devoted to the study of entomology. He is interested in insects, and he sent me some interesting questions, and I promise to answer him, and I hope so for wider audience on these questions. Well, first question, first question. When and how your interest in insects started? if you do remember. Well, 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 very interesting question about first interest in entomology, in insects. Uh, definitely I do remember this time because it was time in a kindergarten and it started in a springtime when approximately in the age of four or five. Well, uh, when spring is coming, everyone is going outside and all children just walking around, running around in a kindergarten and watching for something on the ground. And on the ground, a lot of leaves. And under these leaves, there are a lot of ladybugs. Ladybugs. So this is a very common, very popular ladybugs beetle. So you put it on the finger and say, ladybug, ladybug, just go to your kids. Just your mother will give you the piece of bread. So we did the same, okay, in Russian. And so I guess so, this was my first interest. And later I do remember in the same kindergarten that someone caught a rhinoceros beetle. A rhinoceros beetle was a, just a treasure. It was a really mir miracle to have it. Of course, it was not me, because I remember it pretty well that somebody kept a rhinoceros beetle in, a, in hand. And, he, and this rhinoceros beetle was with a big horn and was a quite a big one. Big one because, as I suggested, rhinoceros was so huge, it was totally like my human palm. Okay, but this was a palm of a ch child. So a rhinoceros beetle was smaller, palm was smaller, and child was smaller. But big and impression was really great. So I said, said for me, oh, that's very interesting. I would like to collect and catch such a similar rhinoceros beetle to keep it in my palm like that. Because here you see my adult's palm is a bigger, so, and you can imagine that rhinoceros beetle is usually smaller than this end. But nevertheless, when you keep as a child beetle in your finger, in your fingers like this, beetle is usually quite a big, and rhinoceros beetle was very big. And after that, I have collected some dung beetle, not rhinoceros beetle. Rhinoceros beetle was still very quite rare, even in a village. But in the dung beetles, they are more common. They are more common. And you know, dung, rhinoceros beetle is shining, brown colored beetle. And dung beetle is usually sometimes shining, but smaller, two times, twice smaller than a rhinoceros beetle. Uh, like this. This rhinoceros beetle and this will be two times smaller. And dung beetles were easy to collect because when you are living in the summertime, in vacation time, in a village, 
So all children just were crawling around everywhere, just searching for something, looking for something. And we were going for fishing with my brothers. So we were fishing. And it was a huge landscape. It was a small stream. And we were fishing in this near this stream for fish. But fish was not so abundant. Not so much fish. You must be very, very careful. Despite to be very careful, to, you can collect just a little bit fish. And it was just a huge field. And on this field there were quite a lot of cows. And after cows, you know, just a lot of dung. So when we're coming to this place and we were searching for beetles under the dung. Because when you just open the dung plate under the dung inside the soil, you can see some holes, several holes. And you can, if you are lucky, you can find some male of dung beetle, which is uh, quite colorful and very attractive. So dung beetle. And as well, female, not so attractive because male has a horn as well, like a rhinoceros beetle, like a small, but females without horn. So this was my, these was my first, some of my first child's impressions, but, but I do not tell more, maybe later, because I have many, 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 many questions. So. What's about se second question? Second question was very, quite uh, interesting. Did your friends or family supported you to your entomology career? Were your uh, ideas, what were your were ideas about entomology? What did they think? What do they think? Actually, they were quite supportive. My relatives, my parents were very supportive because they've seen my interest in nature and entomology. And from the early age, I was interested in biology in particular. I was collecting different insects, kept them at home, watched for them. And it was not an ignorance. I was allowed to keep some small insects. And actually, I didn't keep all insects all the time. I, I had some hoopy fish, different, quite a different fish in aquarium. I had some birds at home. Even um, to keep a few insects were quite difficult because in the latest days of uh, school, for instance, I was interested in bumblebees and to keep bumblebees were quite difficult because it was uh, interesting to find the bumblebee nest. Yes, and I found bumblebee nest. Approximately it was a 10th, 9th, 10th uh, degree in my high school. And I made a special house, special nest with a long entrance wooden house, like a small bumblebee beehive, approximately this size. I put on the balcony. Balcony was on the fifth floor of a building of an apartment's house. And bumblebees were flying from the ground till the fifth floor. Approximately it was actually August. And of course, I collected this bumblebee nest in a village where my grandparents were living in this time. Again, it was collected near this huge mm, place near some dung and and plants stock near plant stock in the ground. I collected them one by one in bottles and then put them inside this wooden nest and so in brought to the city. My parents were not agreeing against it. I kept it on a ba on balcony, on balcony, and it was quite uh, interesting to observe them during the August time, just before school time. About uh, another relatives were just quite curious about it because I was cu curious. I was talking about some stories about insects and entomology and biology. And we were quite curious. And actually, in this time, it was time of the Soviet Union. Everyone in this society, you know, was satisfied. Satisfied. Because it was not a cruel capitalism. It was quite friendly relations between people. There were no nationalism between people. 
people were quite free in searching different literature and go to going to the library, visiting university. It was no problem, especially in this time in the 70s, in the 80s, before the crash of USSR. People were very polite, very polite and very acceptable to different ideas. Now people are more interested in capitalist ideas. It was just very suppressed by all these capitalist ideas, like how to survive in capitalism, how to earn money in capitalism, to get food, to get house, to get car, to improve your life. So this is a capitalistic pressure on the whole society. And in the Soviet Union time, there were no such pressure. People were very, very satisfied and people were quite sure about their future. In about their future in a working place, in a university, in a school, everything was stable. It was a very stable time of development of a socialist society. But now it's capitalism. Everyone just uh, this idea of capitalism, if you follow me, idea of capitalism is still human to human is a wolf. Yes, and if you, you are just stronger wolf, you are stronger predator, so you have a lot more advantages instead to be fight of a ghost chicken, because other predators can kill and can eat you, or can give you just a little, little, little seeds, little seeds, so you will survive only on little seeds. Well, let's go to the next question. What is your favorite insect and species and can you explain why do you like it? Okay, you just kind of see here just in behind of me these pictures a little bit on stream. You can see pictures of a calcid wasps. It's very he's here, not very big, but on my recorded video I will be bigger size. So and my most interesting insects whom I am enjoying very much and whom I collected in different places, they have a very special behavior. All these insects were aerial insects, they are living in air, they can fly. So you can see here insects with different wings, open wings, wings they are standing like that, open wings. So they are very small. These tiny insects, very small, from two millimeters till 0.5 millimeter, half of millimeter, very small. And all of these insects were parasitoid and some phytophagous insects. When I just was writing my PhD in my Institute of Zoology of National Academy of Sciences, I was involved in the study of parasitic wasps of a family Trichoramatidae. I'm studying family Trichogrammatidae. The genus Trichogramma is the most popular subject for biological control of different pests. So, G family Trichogrammatidae includes uh, different genera. Sorry, I speak English. For some Russian speaking, be careful, be patient. If you are interested, I can explain the answer in Russian. And among these beautiful parasitoids, there is this also a group of underwater parasitoids, aquatic parasitoids. This is such unbelievable words, underwater parasitoids. What does it mean? It means that they are parasitizing different insects under the water. Under the water, you know, Underwater, underwater diving beetles, for instance, were living underwater. Stone flies living underwater. Some larvae living underwater. So dragonflies larvae living underwater. And these parasitic wasps, they have wings. They have legs and wings and antenna like another parasitoids. But they are coming underwater to find their host where they, they lay eggs 
and larva will eat another host underwater. Underwater, that's a miraculous idea to find for parasitoids. Parasitoids finding food everywhere, everywhere. These parasitoids were everywhere. I wanted to show you some parasitoids in my hands. For example, these small parasitoids, Braconidae, they can parasitize some caterpillars underwater. Underwater, so they can go underwater on plants, crawling on plants, searching for another insect and parasitizing them underwater. And these are calcid wasps. These are Ansertidae, for instance. This is Peromalidae insect. So some of insects, some of parasitoids can go underwater using their legs. So they're crawling underwater. They're crawling underwater on plants and finding the host and ovipositing inside this host. Underwater! Yes, underwater! This is miraculous. So you can believe that bee, for example, bee can go underwater. Yes. But uh, bee doesn't go underwater. It's one wasp, one big, quite like hawk wasp, uh, belonging to the family Pompilide, going underwater to attack the spider underwater. So going uh, like insect penetrate the surface of water like this, because surface is still stick, very sticky, penetrating. Wings will be sticked over just abdomen, so insects penetrate the surface underwater and go underwater on plants. But the most interesting of them, which I'm talking about, they just appeared in the movie Life Undergrowth of a very famous British BBC man and BBC observer David Attenborough, I gave him this insect, and this insect can go underwater and can move underwater. Can move underwater. How insect can move underwater? This is a tiny parasitic wasp, just one millimeter, can move underwater using legs. So moving underwater. So interesting. This is a genus Pristwichia. Genus Pristwichia. Very unique. Very special insect living underwater and moving underwater by legs. Pristwichia, this is a tiny parasitic wasp which has wings. Has wings. Two different races. One with wings and one without wings. So, and Pompilide is a big wasp. Quite a big wasp, but Pristwichia is a very small. Just only one millimeter, even half of a millimeter. But what she is doing? She is doing. She is going underwater, swimming, swimming underwater with legs easily. And if you can take it out of water, put it, put it somewhere out of water in petri dish, Pristwichia will die out of water for ten after ten minutes. After ten minutes. But underwater can live half of day, one day, even five days can live completely underwater. Pristwichia living. But Pristwichi is so egg parasitoids. This is very my my famous, my famous most interesting insect for me. Pristwichi is going under the water searching for eggs, not caterpillars, for eggs. And these are eggs of different diving beetles. Searching for eggs of diving beetles, sit, sit on, on them and turn in the abdomen and lay eggs inside. Eggs of diving beetles, two different hosts, diving beetles and dragonflies, eggs of dragonflies. So these two hosts, two unique different groups, diving beetles with eggs underwater or dragonfly eggs also underwater. And where are they, these eggs underwater? Usually these eggs were just somewhere inside the plant inside the plant inside the tissue of plant so even little bit only visible only small piece of egg can be visible from the plant so 
parasitoid is coming, coming, searching with antennae for eggs, eggs of dragonflies or eggs of uh, diving beetles, diticide, diticide family, or different families of uh, drag or other dragonflies, and then turning around and laying eggs, and every and it's going all every all this process under the water. Quite miraculous that three uh, Ramatidae family, very large, but this is a unique group in three Ramatidae family and some other families like Eulophidae families, Diapridae families, Braconidae families of parasitic wasps. They have some specific spe groups which parasitizing eggs larvae or pupae of insects under the water in such very specific habitat which is very unique and I, so finally i can say what about prestwichia prestwichia is very unique very small one millimeter size and for example but widely distributed in the world even one genus close to prestwichia found in australia but very like uh, and described in the genus Lutz micron, Lutz micron, very tiny, like a micron. One, several species found in India, in India, Prestwichia, under the water. How people found them? People found putting somewhere near the water, near the stream, near the river, near the pond, these yellow plates, yellow plates with water, with shampoo and salt. So some insects can crawl around and can fall down in these yellow plates. For instance, very easy to buy them in a supermarket and put them near the pond, near the lake, near the stream and collect some insects which are living in pond, in a stream, in a river and then will be flying, crawling everywhere around and could be diving. Some insects, if it will be no salt, with salt they will dive quickly, but without salt they will be still crawling and swimming here inside the, these yellow plates. But the, but the most productive way is to find, to find this aquatic parasite is to find eggs inside plants, inside plants. You can collect like this stick, different plants and then open plants, open the, these plants and look very carefully, look very carefully under microscope or with uh, maybe with some magnification lenses with magnification lenses look very carefully okay and you can find some scratches on plant and under the scratches you can find eggs of different beetles or dragonflies and if you keep them in some boxes in petri dishes inside water especially keep them inside water some parasitoids can emerge for instance prostwichia still have not been described and found in United States of America. Big secret, I'm telling you. It has not been found. This species has not been found in Canada. Yes, if you can put these plates or if you can collect some aquatic plants, open plants, you can find eggs of dragonflies, eggs of diving beetles, and you can find that they are parasitized. Eggs, how you can say that they are parasitized? Eggs were just like an oval shape. This can be different, special stream about it. Oval shape and not parasitized egg. They have a white color. And if parasitoid is coming and laying eggs inside eggs of other insects, insects, egg becoming yellow colored with some visible larvae inside egg. And finally, you can see through transparent shell of egg. You can see even some parasitoids inside the egg. So this is a miracle. So I gave you just a very, very big secret. So you can find new species of a genus Rostovichia in the United States of America. Some specialists are working in the United States of America. But it's quite difficult to still go to the lake, to the pond, to the river, to the stream and find this interesting small insect, this interesting small parasitoids. This will be unique project in your school, in your university, for your master degree.
and if you can send this material to us, to Ukraine, to my Institute of Zoology of National Academy of Sciences, we can immediately, quickly type and write mm, paper, scientific paper, about found, finding of this insect in your area, maybe in India, maybe in Australia, maybe in the United States of America or in Canada, and you can publish it, and it can, will be good promotion for your university, or maybe for your degree, maybe for your study, maybe for your job. Yes, so search for interesting insects. Some interesting insects can help you promote your job. What's about another insect? And another question. Number four question. Why I'm studying calcid wasps? Why I'm studying calcid wasps? Very good question. Very, very, very serious question, by the way. Why did you find? Because when I was in university and I was writing my degree on university, I said, I'm interested in hymenoptera, in hym to study hymenoptera insects. And my uh, chief, a chief of department in uh, Voronezh State University in Russia. I've been graduated in uh, Russia in Voronezh State University. It's still uh, now a very good team of entomologists and algologists and invertebrate zoologists are working in Voronezh. And chief was Oleg Negrobov, Oleg Pavlovich Negrobov. And he sent me for study to St. Petersburg in this time, to Zoological Institute. This is a very special story, because Zoological Institute in St. Petersburg in Russia, far away was from my university. Well, but he said, specialists who are studying Hymenoptera are working over there. So you can make consulting with them. Which group can be interested in what can be useful for study in Hymenoptera, maybe in small parasitic wasps. And he, I was invited to the laboratory of Vladimir Alexandrovich Tropitsin. Vladimir Alexandrovich Tropitsin, he was a chief of a group who just was working with the calcid wasps. Calcid wasps, yes. These are calcid wasps. These are calcid wasps. And I was still student, and he said, uh, yes, uh, so you are quite serious about study of small insects. Well, uh, there are a lot of insects, but some parasitoids they are quite interesting and useful for study. It can be possible to find new species, new places with distribution. So new findings can be everywhere, in your area, everywhere. If you will be very careful, you can find some of them. And he advised me to search for these tiny, small aquatic parasitoids. This is a big secret. Now, Dr. Terpitsin, Dr. Vladimir Alexandrovich Terpitsin is uh, living near Moscow, in some suburbs of Moscow. He, uh, he is on pension after working. And he is uh, not very young now. But I'm very pleased that he is just still living near Moscow, in suburb of Moscow. So, and he advised me to study small parasitic wasp of a family tree of Ramatida because he was a chief and supervisor of a whole super family calcid wasps. Calcid wasps, he supervised all specialists in the former USSR and gave just very serious, very strict, very diligent and very unique advices for all specialists who started their career in the study of parasitic hymenopter. So such my promotion was very useful for me to visit this place. And after that, after studying parasitoids in Voronezh University, I came to Ukraine, to Kiev, where I did my PhD research on the family of Ramatide as a whole family in Ukraine. Well, next question. What's the next question? Well, this question is uh, quite funny, which I'm uploading a video on YouTube channel. Do I like it? Yes, well, I like my videos 
and it's not very easy to upload them. But if I didn't like them, I didn't upload them. That's quite easy answer. And definitely, these my videos are intended for education, education for entertaining, certainly, and maybe for development of entomology in a general sense. In a general sense, because entertaining, I'm not jumping, I'm not talking too much funny stories. I'm talking here professional stories, you know, professional stories about entomology, about parasitoids. So this stream is devoted to parasitoids. I wanted to tell only the stream about parasitoids, but finally I started to make questions.